Hello, my name is Craig Giroux. I'm an academic advisor here at Palm Beach State College. And I'm excited to get a chance to talk to you today, not only about academic advising, but about educational planning. Many of you started an educational plan at New Student Orientation. You might have seen me, because uh, on the Lake Worth campus, certainly I'm in charge of New Student Orientation. Hopefully we did two semesters of educational planning during that time. Uh, but today we're going to talk about preparing to do even more. I want to start with just generally talking about how we can help you in academic advising. We have general advising information. That's, we hear the students say to us, uh, I have a simple question. Uh, to start with, there aren't many of those because when you come to see us, uh, you're going to ask us one thing and we're going to probably ask you four. Okay, trying to get to what you want to be. We have much academic program information. Okay, many of you aren't aware the programs we have to offer here at Palm Beach State. Um, that would be like going to a restaurant that you've never been to before and when the waitress says, do you want to see a menu, you say, no, I'll just order. Well, you wouldn't do that. You would want to see what's on the menu. So we know what's on the menu. Let's talk briefly about that. We have AA degrees. AA stands for Associate in Arts. Uh, doesn't mean you're going to be an artist. What it does mean is it's a transfer degree that has um, some general education classes plus some elective classes uh, that allow you to transfer to a university or stay here and pursue a bachelor's degree. The second type of a program degree that we want to talk about is an AS degree. Uh, that's associate in science. Again, it doesn't mean that you're going to be a scientist. What it does mean is if an AA degree will go to the university um, for a bachelor's degree, an AS degree typically will allow a student to go to work. Our AS degrees are more te te technical in nature. What I mean by that is, uh, for instance, many of you want to be a nursing student. What I mean by that is when you get into our nursing program, you're not just going to study about what nurses do. You're actually going to go to hospitals and do that. Maybe you're interested in dental hygiene. You're going to actually clean teeth. So you're going to be prepared to do a job. Crime scene, graphic design, interior design. We have many AS programs that will prepare the student after two years getting a degree to go, go into the workforce. Um, we also have many vocational programs. Uh, we have things that students aren't even aware of. Uh, we have things like uh, auto mechanic, diesel mechanic, uh, police academy, fire academy, um, welding. We also have one of the best kept secrets at Palm Beach State, which is massage therapy. Our massage therapy is, program is housed on our Boca Raton campus. Some of you might want to call up down there. They need people to work on, okay? Uh, much of what we get with students, especially just prior to peak, is course selection assistance. Okay, this is where a student shows up and sometimes waits anywhere from an hour to two hours and all they want to know is what's next. This is what I call the high school mentality to academic advising. They, they wait, they, they show up, I give them what's next and certainly they'll go and register. Educational planning, this is what we really want to talk about today. This is not just what's next, it's what's next and next and next and next, hopefully all the way to graduation. Educational planning is your GPS, okay? It, 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 it is just like if I wanted to drive to a vacation spot in New York or in Minnesota, and I didn't know how to get there. I will tell you that a very short time ago, uh, you would have to go to MapQuest and just, just pull that up. But now we have, I can, on my cell phone, it'll give me directions, step-by-step -step directions on how to get to my vacation site. Now, many of you should have already gone to the Career Center, and hopefully you know what your degree is or that you're searching for, which is the same as your vacation site. Hopefully you're going to get there and it's going to allow you certainly to make, make your millions uh, so you can go on vacation. Um, but if we do an educational plan, 
it's going to give you every semester of what you want to take, okay? And if we are prepared and we have a clear path as what we're going to do to get to our degree, then we have confidence to get there. Students are not confident that don't know what they have ahead of them. Educational planning will lead you there. We have many college and university transfer information. Uh, on our campus, we have universities come all the time, uh, and you're going to want to go to talk to them. Certainly, you can ask me about FAU, and I know some information because we have a lot of students that go there. But certainly, if you go talk to FAU, that person's going to know more about FAU than even I do. Okay, so you're going to want to uh, go to our transfer seminars and go talk to the universities that are on our campus. We have information about college resources and services. That's what this class is about. Uh, but certainly um, we have that information also and much more. This is where we're located on the Lake Worth campus, CT 114. We're down near the cafeteria. Here's our telephone number and certainly we have an email address uh, that you can contact us. Also give you the web page. Okay. If you need to see somebody, we're, we, we are going to be down there on a walk-in basis only. You should know that coming early in the morning is certainly the best time. We certainly want to see you. Our hours of operation are located there Monday through Thursday, 8 to 7. We do have Friday hours, 8 to 4. Um, certainly we do have uh, different hours during the summer, so make sure that you check back with academic advising uh, to take care of that. Okay. At this time, I want to talk about a little bit about our website and where you can search for some information at Palm Beach State College. Number one, if we look at the very bottom of our website, we have all these links. And ones that are very, very important over here are, the, for instance, at the academic calendar. Our academic calendar is uh, online at all times. Uh, it will have the first day you can register for class. It will have the first day of class, the last day to drop, the last day to withdraw, all important dates. I will tell you that students are allowed to register anywhere from a month to two months before the first day of class. You should come during that time and the very first day that you can register, you should register for class. Uh, otherwise, you're risking the further you go not being able to find a class that's a perfect class for you the time you want, the instructor you want, um, on the campus that you want. Okay, so make sure that you're, you're prepared to look at that. Also up here, I want to look at the events calendar. Why would I look at the events calendar? Well, when I look at the events calendar, I have a lot of students who will say, you know, University of Florida, that's where I want to go. I wish you guys would tell us when they're going to be on campus. Certainly we do that. Every event on Palm Beach State campus is contained on our uh, events calendar. And an example when I put my cursor right over here, it's going to give me all the information about a transfer workshop that's, that FAU is having on our Palm Beach Gardens campus. You can contact them, tells you what room it's at. Um, if you guys really look, you can you could probably eat, eat lunch free uh, because many of our events, they're going to feed you. Uh, if you want to uh, eat lunch free and learn something about your academic progress, you, I would look on your uh, events calendar. You guys should go home tonight and I would say take the next three uh, months and look at our events calendar and put it down on your agenda if there's something that you might be interested in. As I go back to the top, one other thing that I want to talk about on our calendar is People Finder. We get students that call us in academic all advising all the time that want to know, I need to contact my math professor, I need to contact this person or that person. Do you have the number? Certainly I could probably find it, but you can also. Many of you might want to contact me, Craig Giroux, in academic advising. Uh, but I know his first name's Craig. So I can type C-R-A-I-G, okay, and then when I hit search, I'll get Craigslist. No, I won't get Craigslist. I will get a list of Craigs at Palm Beach State College. 
And when you look down there, Student Development Advisor 2 should make sense, and hopefully you'll recognize my last name. So when you click on that, you'll get my pertinent information. When you look at a staff or faculty member's information, you'll see a telephone number, an office number, and an email address. And I will tell you the least important in academic advising is going to be my telephone number. I hear students complain all the time, I call you and I can never get you. When we're sitting in our office uh, with a student and the phone rings, we're not going to answer the phone, it would be rude. We want to devote all our time to the student that's in our office. Also, I'm out doing new student orientation or going to strategies for college success classes, uh, so I'm not going to be available uh, by telephone. Certainly you can come to my office, but you, you need to check in, in um, over in the CT building before you see me. But probably the easiest way to contact me is through email. Make sure you're using your Palm Beach State email so I know it's you. Uh, and I get emails every day that certainly I can respond to. Email's always good because as we respond to you, now you have a hard copy of what we said. Uh, so try to utilize your email when at all possible. Now your assignment, probably the, the best part of what we're going to talk about today, is your educational planning that we want to do with you. I am going to contact all of your professors and we're going to give them paperwork to pass along to you about educational planning. I think it's so important for students to do critical thinking uh, concerning their educational plan. I have students who come into my office and say, well tell me what to take. Well, I need to know a lot more about you. Are you full or part-time? How many classes do you want to take uh, each semester? Okay, do I, if, if I'm part-time, do I want to take one, two, or three? If I'm full-time, do I want to take four? Are you working? Are you going to take summer class? These are all questions that you need to answer in your own mind prior to coming to see us in academic advising. I got a br brief description there on students for AA and AS degrees. And there's some paperwork that you must gather before you come, uh, before we come see you in your strategies class. The first thing that I want you to look at, uh, if I'm an AA student, and again, what is an AA student? An AA student is somebody that wants to get a bachelor's degree. Now, what I, the mistake that I hear from some students when they come see me is, I want to just get a general AA. Typically, that does not work, guys, and here's the reason why. A business major that wants to get a bachelor's degree is an AA student, okay? An elementary education teacher is an AA student, but a, and a pharmacist is an AA student, but the classes that each of those take are going to be vastly different, okay? Uh, there, sometimes the general education classes are going to be required to be different and definitely our elective classes are going to be different. I want to look at the AA general education sheet briefly. This is 36 hours of general education. I want to talk briefly about area one communications. It doesn't matter if I'm going to be an elementary school teacher, a business major, or a pharmacist. All students, once they're out of English and reading prep, have to take College Comp 1, College Comp 2, and Speech. Okay, Comp 1, Comp 2, and Speech. Speech. Many of you, when I say the word speech, get this bad feeling in the pit of your stomach and say, I'd really rather not take speech. I will tell you that speech is certainly one of the best classes that I think makes you a better student. It's required. Do not avoid it. If I take speech, number one, we have great speech teachers, okay? They are aware that 95% of the people that come into speech class are not excited about taking speech. They have that bad feeling in their stomach. If I become a better speaker, a perfect speaker, maybe not, a better speaker, you bet, then when I take another class, let's say sociology, and I'm asked to give a five-minute presentation, I'm going to do a better job 
at giving that presentation. I'm going to probably get an A, not a C. So please do not avoid speech. Area two is humanities. Number one, the top area, literature. I have to take one class out of there. All right. And in the bottom area, art, music, or theater appreciation, I have to take one class. For most students, it doesn't matter which of these classes you take. If I'm a communications major, I might be required to take more literature. If I'm a lit major, obviously I'll be required to take more literature. Okay? Down at the bottom, it really doesn't matter. It will be whatever you want and what you think is going to be most interesting to you. I want you to look back up at the lit literature for a moment. When I went here in 1978, yes, I was five when I started. No, I wasn't. When I went here in 1978 and I took literature, you had a choice between taking American Lit or British Lit. I chose British literature with a professor that was named Watson B. Duncan III. Yes, a little scary. I was a business major. He taught British literature Shakespeare. Not only did he teach British literature Shakespeare, but he taught 125 students in every class. And I will tell you this, that Watson B. Duncan was singly the greatest professor that I ever had. Math person, business person, Shakespeare. Well, how could that be? Well, we have a lot of great professors. And what I want to talk to you briefly is, how do you guys find your professors? And I know some of you are saying there's that website you can look at. Well, number one, it's not a Palm Beach State website. But I do talk to students briefly about it. I believe it's called Rate My Professor. When you look at that, I don't want you to look at that and see who's complaining about teachers. If somebody is complaining about a teacher, do you think they passed or failed? They probably failed, okay? And so when they have a bad comment, it's more about the grade they got than it is the type of teacher. I want you to look for learning styles. What do I mean by that? Let's say that one of the sociology teachers uh, is, the comments say, very little about what that pr professor lectures on in class is on the test. You have to read the book. And I ask you, is that a good comment? Some of you are going, well, that's a very bad comment. Well, it's not if I'm a great reader. Or maybe you're that person that's in class, and when you start to take notes, you start thinking about, where am I going to go to lunch? Where are my friends doing this afternoon? Boy, it's really nice outside. I wish I was out there. Well, that's probably a good class for you to take because maybe you're a good reader but have a hard time taking notes. If you're not a good reader, then I want to look for somebody that really gives me notes that I can follow and I can succeed in their class. Okay? So, I want you to consider looking for learning styles. Now we're going to go down the area three math. Look at all the different kinds of math that I have to pick from. So far what we've talked about in communications and humanities, it didn't matter if I was a business major, elementary school teacher, or a pharmacist, I, I would just basically take one from each area. Now I get to math and now it's very different. When I look at an elementary school teacher, an elementary school teacher only has to take very simple math. It could be something like liberal arts math and finite math. Does that mean that an elementary school teacher does not have to be smart? Certainly it doesn't mean that. And any of you think that because they take sim simple math, they don't have to be smart. What I want you to do is to gather up about 25 six-year-olds and spend eight hours a day with them, five days a week, and then tell me just how easy it is. All of us sitting here right now and, and looking at this video can think of an elementary school teacher that made a difference in, their, in your life and you could call them by name. Now let's go to a business major. Business major is going to have to take college algebra, coming out of math prep, survey of calculus, and statistics. Well, I thought you said I only had to take two classes in the math area. That's three. That's correct. But coming out of math prep, a student is going to take 
college algebra first, and then survey a calc, and then statistics. So what happens to the extra class? It becomes one of your 24 hours of electives. Okay? Now, if I'm a pharmacist coming out of math prep, I'm going to have to take college algebra, trigonometry, pre-calculus, calculus with analytic geometry 1, 2, and 3. Okay, I'm going to have to take 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, possibly 6 maths, okay, as a pharmacist. Now some of you are saying, all I want to do is count pills. That, that doesn't make any sense. But what you need to consider is a pharmacist is a doctor. So all the classes that you would take as a pre-med student, you're going to also take that as a pharmacist. Oh, here's, here's a good thing. Pharmacists start at six figures their first year. So maybe some of you might want to be a pharmacist. Let's come up to the science area, which is area four. Students have to take two classes out of that science area. Now, let's stay with the same three occupation, a type of AA degrees that we were talking about. Our elementary school teacher. Nothing is required here, just take two. But I think it makes sense to take classes like environmental conservation, earth science. Well, why do those make sense? Because that's what you're going to teach your students. Okay? As, as a business major, nothing required there. And so you can choose whatever you want. Just choose two. As a pharmacist, I really care what you take. You can't just choose two. You have a lot to do here. You're going to do principles of biology one and two and labs. You're probably going to do at least anatomy and physiology one and two. You might take introductory chemistry before you take general chemistry one and two. You're going to take microbiology and probably some physics. You might have eight sciences, but that makes sense, guys. Uh, you're going to be pre-med. All of your electives as a pharmacist are going to probably come from math and science. Not having a educational plan, if I'm pre-med, is dooming me to take classes that I don't need to take. Okay? You need to target the correct classes. That's why we want you to do an educational plan. Come down to area five, which is social science. We have to do typically one out of the top and the bottom. As an elementary school teacher, I would, nothing required, but I would suggest general psychology. I also would say one of these two history classes makes sense to me. Why? Because you're going to teach history to your students. As a business major, there, we do not want to take psychology. We would love for you to take principles of macroeconomics. Why principles of macroeconomics? Because that makes sense if I'm a business major and one out of the bottom. Now for your pharmacist, we come back, one out of the top, one out of the bottom, it doesn't matter. And the, you're probably saying if you want to be a pharmacist, great, it finally doesn't matter. I want you to look at Area 5 Health or Foreign Language. Most students are going to take a health class. As long as you have completed two years of foreign language successfully, the same foreign language in high school. If you haven't completed two, you've only completed one or none, then you're going to have to take two semesters of foreign language here. And that will count right there in that area. Continuing on with our AA degree, students need to look at their transfer guidelines to determine what are the elective classes that I need to pick. And let's stay with the, with the same types of classes that we've talked about so far. Let's start with our business administration student. Our business student is going to get from virtual campus some classes that are required for them. As you look at those classes, those seem to make sense for a business major. You have financial accounting, managerial accounting, microcomputer applications. There's that macroeconomics class we talked about. Microeconomics, survey, account, and stat. Not only do you have to take these if I'm a business major, at most colleges they're going to have a minimum GPA in these required classes. 
If I have an AA degree but do not have these classes and I knock at the College of Business door, they're probably going to look at it and say, you can go away. You can get into the university maybe, but you can't get into the College of Business. Let's keep going down. We're going to look at an elementary teacher education. Now much of what I talked about with the, the elementary school teacher is, I said nothing required, but I would suggest. Now those are good suggestions, and probably what you want to take as, as you're going forward with your educational plan. But these three classes, Introduction to the Teaching Profession, Diversity for Educators, and Technology for Educators are all required for elementary school teachers. There are other classes like maybe behavior management in the classroom that I would suggest. These make a lot of sense for an elementary school teacher. They make no sense for a business major. Oh, I didn't forget the pharmacist. As we go down and look at our pharmacist, and we look at these classes, some of you might say, Yee, look at that. We have all your biologies, anatomies, chemistries, organic chemistries, trig, pre-calc, Calc 1, physics, all those kinds of things that we were talking about. But again, it's hard. And what I tell students is, it should be, okay? You're going to be a doctor. And just so you know, my opinion is, I think when I see a doctor, I ought to look at their transcript. How many of you guys want a C doctor? You want an A doctor, don't you? Me too. So that's what you have to gather as an AA student. As an AS student, you have to do your degree course program sheet. And I will click on that and I will go to the information on this screen and I see all the different classes, programs that we have here. One of the most common is nursing for an AS program. Remember, an AS program is going to go to work, and I click on nursing, and I click on nursing again, and there's a lot of information about the program, but the most important is down here at the bottom. The program prerequisites in the general education that you have to take prior to getting into our nursing program. Our nursing program, like many of our health programs, health science programs, are limited access programs, okay? So we want to make sure that we complete all the prerequisites before you go there. What order I take those classes is certainly very important. As I look at the bottom of uh, the sheet that I'm going to send you, we want to send you and have you make a rough draft of your educational plan. Everyone should write down the classes that you're in now on this rough draft. Uh, if you went to new student orientation, you should probably have two semesters, okay? And I'm going to give you an example of what an educational plan looks like, okay? Here is the educational plan worksheet that we want you to fill out. Certainly, if we're in the fall semester, you should be able to write your classes down for the fall semester. If you were in the spring, certainly you can do that. Look back at your educational plan, see what the next semester is, and fill those in. This is what I call a rough draft. You should write your major in. You should write whether it's an AA or an AS degree. You should take your pen or, paper, pen or pencil and put it to the paper and fill in what you think the right classes would be. Let's talk about how we get to our educational plan at our Palm Beach State website. I go to PantherWeb. Most everybody's been there. I put my student ID and my password in. And here I'm into my PantherWeb. As I look at this, I'm going to go up to Advising come down to educational plan and when I click on my educational plan if I have created one then it will be displayed as you see right here. Let's look in the spring. This student has ENC0025 
They also have earth science and health and math prep too. During the summer, they'll take intermediate and fundamentals of speech. Then we come back in the fall. And what, what kind of student do you think this is? If you were looking at the example educational plans, you will probably denote that this is a business student. Okay? So this is an example of how you get into educational planning in your Panther Web. Okay? Um, if I wanted to change something, when I go into my educational plan, it's going to look like this. And if I wanted to say, I don't want to take health here, I can get rid of that, delete it. Okay. And let's say that I want to take BSC 1050 and go back and save my educational plan. And you'll see that it no longer has health, that it put me in environmental conservation. You have the ability to change your educational plan. Your educational plan does not register you for class. What it does is provide that clarity that we talked about so you can have confidence to reach your program of study. I also have given you, and will give you, written steps to create an educational plan. A student that fails to plan is planning to fail. I think that's so important. We need to create that clarity for you. And when we come and see you in your classroom, I want to see that rough draft of what you think the classes should be that you should take for the next few semesters. We're going to have advisors that will give you better suggestions. Maybe you've done a great job. And uh, we'll put it on your plan. Your plan can be adjusted, changed, uh, I, and, and briefly I want to tell you about probably the most important educational plan that I ever did. There was a young man that was starting and had one class that he was taking, and then he was going to be gone for four semesters. And he says, I really want to do an educational plan because I'm going to have to take all my classes online while I'm away for those four semesters. And I said, why are you going to be away? Well, he was taking his online classes from Afghanistan. He was actually in our military. And he said he wanted to take classes over there and then return. We hope and pray he does. And we look forward to seeing him back. But by him having an educational plan, he had a good idea because he couldn't just pick up a phone or send an email on a moment's notice to me to get, uh, to get advised. Uh, if any of you have any questions, make sure that you come with them when we come to uh, see your class. And that's a lot of information in a short period of time. And I would ask uh, that you have a very good day, and we look forward to seeing you. Thank you very much.